I am equal parts super excited and like completely petrified. Hello everyone, welcome back to the vlog. Today is the day. Today is the day. Well, it's not the day for me, but it's the day for you. By the time you're watching this, the vegan croissants will be in the freezer aisle. They will be available for you to bake at home. And so I wanted to take today in this vlog and explain to you kind of what went on behind the scenes for that to happen. Let's sit down and talk about this. All right, so let's just backtrack for a moment here and talk about the vegan croissants. People are really obsessed with them. So always love croissants, have been in love with croissants. And then when I went to Paris, I don't even know how many croissants I've had. There was no carb left behind, no croissant left behind. Like those are just like amazing, buttery, flaky goodness. I hated the fact that when I went vegan, like that did not fit into the equation. Like how could I give those amazing things up? And like many other things in the bakery before, like brownies and cakes, I was like, I'm just not okay with that. So I'm gonna do something to fix it. And my whole goal with it was like, like they were gonna have to be that perfection that you can get in Paris. And if it's not that, there is no point. So I started playing around with it and after much trial and error, Finally, I arrived at a great recipe, and then I started selling those to coffee shops here in Tampa Bay. So a number of different coffee shops and cafes uh, serve my stuff to their customers, and it's fantastic. So, but then I get a lot of DMs from people just going like, I wanted some, I stopped by the coffee shop and they were sold out. Or, like, I can't get out of the house, they're not open today. Or, so I started thinking, like, let's get back to the values of this company. And I've said this many times here on the channel. People want to do the right thing. They do not want to harm an animal in order to have a snack. But they also don't want to give up the wonderful things that they love, like croissants and cookies and cakes. So, um, my whole idea with the bakery is to offer amazing food that just happens to be vegan so that people don't have to sacrifice anything in order to do the right thing. If that was the idea, like... That was the logical next step, is to have croissants that people could just bake at home, vegan croissants that people could just bake at home. That way, if they have an unexpected visitor come around and they need some good food, or if they're asked to bring something to a party, or they just wanna have a treat on a Sunday morning when they're like not feeling great and they need something that would just like make their day better, that will be it and it will be vegan. And no animals were tortured in the making of this happy moment. So that was the next logical step. Now, and taking that step was a whole other deal. Now the first step when I decided that I was going to do this was to make sure that I could do it because everybody knows bread is better when it's fresh. Day of, straight out of the oven, nothing beats a croissant like that, right? And I didn't want it to taste stale or anything like that, so I needed to test it out. I needed to make sure that if I froze these croissants, they could be put back in the oven and still taste amazing because there are other products that shall remain nameless out there in the world. Let's face it, it's not the best. Like, it's okay, but it's not like, wow. And I want it the wow. I take pride on the fact that everything that I make, somebody tastes it and they're like, whoa, like I did not know this was vegan. There's no way this is vegan. That was the bar. So then the testing phase started. I started just baking some and putting them into plastic bags and putting them in the freezer and leaving them. I was dating them and just putting them in the freezer and letting them be and doing the taste test a month, two months three months later, giving it to my friends and inviting people over so they could taste test. Uh, so these have been in the freezer for five weeks now. <laughs> Obviously you guys have had the fresh croissants thousands of times. So we just, I just want your feedback in terms of like, does it taste any different? Does the texture feel different? Does it feel more greasy, oily? Does, is, it, is there any difference? and then we'll move on from there, so. They look nice when you cut them. It smells the same. It it's not like it a is. one to ten. Uh, taste, same. Everything, like, flavor-wise, crispy-wise, middle-wise, all the same. Like, it's rare Crunchy. that I eat one actually, mm -hmm. like, fresh-baked, mm -hmm. so I think there's, like, It's got a nice that crunch to it, yeah. Yeah, the crunch is still there, which was, uh, I was afraid that it was gonna lose the crunch and it was gonna be soggy. 
Mm-hmm. My idea when I was telling people to taste test things was that like if one person says that it's like 3% less good than the originals, that's it. That's it. We are cutting this whole project. Like this is not happening. It's back to the drawing board. Like it's like, scrap it. Done. Thankfully though, those taste tests went really, really well. And people really loved it. And I started getting feedback like saying that they were just as good. They were even better than the ones that they tasted before. They couldn't tell a difference at all. Once we had the product down and we're like, all right, we got something. The next step was figuring out packaging. And I did some research, of course, online. And most of the packaging that I could find to do customized and designed and all that stuff was pretty crazy. Like most of the places had a minimum of 5,000. Like ridiculous. I just decided to get scrappy. And uh, that I'm really good at. Being scrappy as a business owner is, is a must. And uh, I've, I have to say, I like, kind of master that art by now. What I did is we did vacuum sealed packages and then I repurposed the stickers from the boxes of croissants that I deliver to customers locally. Utilizing that idea which is completely on brand and that I personally love and I feel like it just really shows like what Curious Cat Bakery is all about. And then I just played around with it and added some more information. A lot of information in a very specific manner. So now let's get into the red tape of it all. So I had to look into what exactly needed to be on the packaging for a frozen product being sold in grocery stores. If you're wondering, are there a lot of rules regarding that? Or can you just put whatever you want on the label? Because there's actually 195 pages manual on how to do that from the FDA. And then that's the really unglamorous side of owning a business, of doing this, of everything, is that part of my job was to read that 195 page page manual and see exactly where I needed to put things into that label because there are very specific rules from the font size that you have to list your ingredients in to the order that you have to list your ingredients in where the thing was manufactured I know way too much about labeling legally you're required to list every single ingredient that's in your product and that means if you're using something like on my croissants vegan butter you have to put in parentheses every single ingredient that goes into the vegan butter. Same thing with the almond milk that I buy. I can't just say almond milk. I have to list in parentheses all of the ingredients that are into the almond milk. It took about one week for me to make a mistake. Let me show you. This right here is the first run of the stickers that I printed for the back. And I missed a pretty important ingredient, which was the chocolate chips. I forgot to list them. I made sure that every single ingredient in the vegan butter was there and then the almond milk was there. Completely forgot to list the chocolate chips, so that was a problem. But that's not where the problems ended. Once I started reaching out to grocery stores to, you know, talk about selling the product, one of them asked me, oh, you don't have a barcode? Oops. I was just up front and I was like, listen, I'm doing this for the first time. <laughs> I didn't know I needed a barcode. So then I came home and I Googled barcodes, how to get a barcode. Ended up finding out that you do need to register with a website called GS1 and the organization that issues barcodes. And essentially I registered there, made myself a barcode, you had to pay a fee. And then that gives you kind of a number that your product is registered as. So the number basically is like a fingerprint for your product that says this product is this and it's made by this. I had to get the stickers reprinted with the right ingredients and the barcode. So we're all set now. So once the product and the packaging was finished, the next step was figuring out where to sell this to. And to do that, I had to figure out what a sales sheet was and how to design one. So a sales sheet is basically a little flyer that explains to people what your product is. So I did some research, looked at some other brands and what their sales sheet looked like. And all of them looked pretty nice, very colorful. It has some information on the product, the pricing. It has all the benefits listed. So I took those ideas and then I designed my own, just featuring nice photos of the product 
and featuring that it was vegan, that it was a woman-owned brand. Some of the reviews that I've gotten that said that, you know, it's better than the Paris ones. Now I've mentioned here on the vlog and I've actually taken you on a tour as well of a vegan grocery store here in St. Pete called Black Radish Glo Grocer. Grocer. Why is it so hard for me to say that word today? I just knew that they would be the perfect place to kick off this launch because their audience and my audience the Venn diagram is one circle and I know the people that run the store and they are absolutely amazing So I just knew that that was a place to kick off things. So I reached out to them and they said yes So that's gonna be the place that you can get it to begin with and we are ten days away from the launch and I just realized that there's a piece of the puzzle that I didn't consider and that is how to deliver the units to the retailers when I make deliveries, they're an individual unit and I take them in a bakery box. But like, this is different, so... <laughs> Thankfully, I remember that pretty soon after I registered the business, these started getting delivered to my house. And they're just catalogs of like... Industrial, in some cases, uh, materials and uh, supplies. Probably have to get one of these like corrugated boxes. I'm learning all these new words and terminology. You know, it looks like they do same day shipping. So this is good. But yeah, like all of these little pieces of the puzzle. Completely forgot about that. I can do hard things. I can figure it out. So You guys, I'm just like looking a little stressed. This is it, like they're launching and I can't believe it. Like we are in end of June now and it's like crazy to think about. Like the entire year has been building up to this. This has been the project that's just been in the back going on. Cannot wait to see photos, to see the reviews, to see what you guys think of it, but also like it's like that little, like that little fear that you have, like when you throw a birthday party and you're like, what if nobody shows up? Of course there's some of that, you know? So it's like, I am equal parts super excited and like completely petrified. Grocery stores will sell what people buy. Like if you launch a product and it doesn't sell, they're not gonna reorder. And then that's the end of that. So if you're local, please go out there and support and buy yourself a package. That would mean a lot to me. And then if you would feel compelled, just send me a photo, tag me at Curious Cat Bakery on Instagram. It would mean the world to me. I am so excited for this and I'm gonna be sharing more recipes on Instagram and like how you can, ways that you can dress up or like make sandwiches and like kind of like make it even more like special. Yeah, this is it. And then hopefully this will be a huge success and then we can expand to other grocery stores and eventually nationally, internationally. The sky's the limit. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's it. This is like a behind the scenes of what's been going on and how this all came about. Feeling a little vulnerable, not gonna, not gonna lie. Like, I, I just really hope this goes well. So, yeah. Mm. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you're local, go buy some vegan croissants. And I love you so much. And thank you for allowing me to providing you guys with some awesome vegan products so you don't have to sacrifice anything in order to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys next week on the next vlog.